questions, but after reading your opinion piece in the Sunday's Daily News and hearing your testimony here today, I'll use my time to correct the half-truths and lies that insult New Yorkers. You cite CMS data to claim New York had the 12th lowest death rate at the end of 2020. However, CMS began collecting data in mid-May, so the deaths when your deadly directive was in full force were not included. Your administration reported 6,000 deaths. The true toll was 11,400, nearly double. You assert your March 25th directive never mandated nursing homes to admit COVID-positive patients. This is false. Your directive very clearly says no resident shall be denied, and it prohibited COVID testing before admission. In your op-ed, and again today, you claim that the directive mirrored CDC guidelines. This is also false. Both CMS and CDC use permissive language like can and should, not shall and must, and only if facilities could isolate and take precautions. Former CMS Administrator Seema Verma, former White House Dr. Deborah Burks, both testified that your actions violated those guidelines. CDC and CMS would never recommend prohibited, prohibiting testing, yet your directive did, all while you were sending tests to the Hamptons for your family. And you also falsely claim this directive was the standard across the country, even trying to hide behind Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz's directive when Minnesota's guidance actually included caveats, precautions. It didn't prevent nursing homes from testing patients like your directive did. You claimed that the March 25th directive was to protect hospital capacity, but you had the U.S. Navy comfort ship and the Javits Center deployed, and and it was remained underutilized. You said that nursing homes could still have denied entry to those they could not safely care for under existing law, but you suspended that very regulation in a March 7, 2020 executive order stripping nursing homes of that ability to deny admission. And on top of all of that, you say New York didn't undercount nursing home deaths, yet your chief of staff directed that the deaths of nursing home residents outside the facility not be counted. And later, exactly one month after the New York Attorney General exposed that you underreported the nursing home deaths by 50%, your chief told Democrat lawmakers in New York that she admitted that the true toll was withheld to avoid attracting prosecutors. That, Governor Cuomo, is a cover-up. You've tried to blame everyone including the CDC, the CMS, nursing home operators, nursing home staff, an unidentified low-level DOH staffer that supposedly sent out this directive. And of course, President Trump. But the buck stops with you. You testified that you don't know who signed off on this March 25th directive, and your DOH commissioner did not either, you say, despite both of your names, both of your names being at the top of the letterhead. In the closed door testimony, both you and your chief of staff told the committee it was some mid-level staffer at the Department of Health. But the commissioner and the deputy commissioner of the Department of Health said it was your executive chamber that approved it. You did not have a name on June 11th. Do you have one today? Who signed off on this directive? Was it you? Let me try to... Was it the lieutenant governor, Kathy Hochul? Was it your chief of staff, yeah, Melissa? Me, no, it's a yes or no. I mean, was it you? Was it Kathy Hochul? Was it your chief of staff, Melissa DeRosa? Or maybe it was that communist spy. Maybe they, it was that communist Chinese spy, Linda Sun, who worked in your administration. Well, maybe when Let they, me just please finish, and I'll let you answer at the end. Because I find it hard to believe, Governor, that the governor of the state of New York, you're known to be a micromanager, right, who did a briefing every day for 111 straight days. We find it hard to believe that you did not know that this directive with such consequences went out with your name at the top and that you didn't get to the bottom, right? Don't you want to get to the bottom of who did issue this after all the media attention, the public scrutiny, the deaths that resulted? You've shown, I'm sorry, but you've shown no empathy. You've shown no remorse. You show no responsibility for the actions of your administration. And that's simply, that's just not leadership. Yeah. And I will say also the lieutenant, your lieutenant, and successor, Governor Kathy Hochul, is just as determined to hide the truth from New Yorkers as you were. I mean, in her very first speech as governor, she promised transparency, including the release of documents related to nursing homes and the pandemic. Yet to this day, she has not fulfilled that promise, and I'm glad that we've issued a subpoena to get that, those documents. So who issued the, this executive order? 
this deadly directive. Okay. And why didn't you reverse the directive when you had alternative facilities like the Javits and South Beach Psychiatric Center on Staten Island? Yeah. Uh, Congresswoman, uh, quickly, the numbers I cited are published on the NIH website. It's a study that corrects for the numbers not uh, received in May. Um, the Dr. Burks and Dr. Seema were not presented an honest account of what the New York law says. The, it's the Attorney General who said and interprets New York laws, and you were in the legislature, and you know that the, the state time has runs expired. on the Attorney General's Governor, interpretation. Governor, the time has expired. Let me answer. Um, Sorry. I now I recognize <laughs> Yeah, maybe for the record you can answer the question that she actually asked. I now recognize Mr. Mfume from Maryland for five minutes of questions. 